I am still celebrating getting my source book, Sandy Peterson's Los Mitos de Cthulhu 5e into Spanish. So let's talk about a country that speaks Spanish and has a long tradition of horror. Some of it quite good. Mexico. In 1931, Todd Browning's movie Dracula came out featuring Bela Lugosi as the Count. I adore this movie. I agree, it's not perfect. It moves a little slow for a modern audience, but it has some really good moments. Like when Drac is walking upstairs through a giant spider web without disturbing it, then Renfield fathers and he has to like struggle his way through. And every moment the Lego size on camera is solid gold. It only kind of drags sometimes when the other people are doing things. But here's the deal. This was 1931. Before this time, movies were silent, and it was really, really easy to localize a movie for any language you wanted. You just took the sound card, the, 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 the word cards that said what they were saying, and you put in whatever language you wanted. But now they're doing sound, and they weren't sure how to do a Spanish version of Dracula. Dubbing hadn't really been invented, so what they did was, during the day, Todd Browning filled Dracula, and at night, a Mexican grew filmed Dracula on the same sets using the same script in Spanish. And more to the point, the director and cinematographer saw the uh, the stuff that the Todd Browning's crew had done during the day, so they had that to improve on and try to do better in the evening. Here you can see Carlos Villarias as Dracula. Now, he's not as good as Bela Lugosi, but the actual cinematography of the Mexican version of Dracula is actually better than the American version. And though the Mexican Renfield isn't Dwight Fry, he's really good. Really, all the supporting cast is fine. I prefer the Mexican Mina to the American one. Carlos Villarias is, is not as good as Bella, but, aside, but it's, it's worth checking it out. Um, and uh, here's the first, here's one of the starts of Mexican horror, actually doing straight up Dracula in the same sets. Now Mexican horror moved on from there. One of the bad things about Mexican horror, from my point of view, is that it's hard to access for non-Spanish speakers. Few of their films are subtitled. They generally are, are given short shrift in the industry. Some were taken and heavily re-edited with terrible English dubs. And for a few glorious years, the company Casa Negra appeared and released 10 terrific movies with wonderful subtitle versions. Now. Mexican horror always seems to be about 10 years behind American horror in terms of style. So like a Mexican movie from the 60s looks a lot like an American movie from the 40s or 50s. But during this time period, the 60s, they managed to come up with some really great movies. The Mexican legend of La Llorona, the crying woman, well known here in Texas, has been filled many times, including some really recent ones. But the 1963 version from Mexico is by far the best. Here's an example. In the first few minutes of the movie, there's four people that are killed. One is stabbed to death, one is eaten by dogs, one is strangled, and one is run over by a carriage. Just like for four minutes and all these deaths. And there's other great scenes. There's, a, there's flying skull-faced monsters, and there's the uh, a crying woman's corpse impaled by a spear that must be pulled out by the by the, her descendant to bring her back to life. There's Satanism. There is the crying in the background. It's a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. And here we are in the in the 2020, and we haven't improved on that with our La Llorona's. In fact, we've gotten worse. So then we have this movie, The Brainiac, one of the greatest movies of all time, in my opinion. Now, yes, it's extremely goofy, but it's so much fun to watch that I recommend it without reservation. I won't say anything more about it than to say that I don't understand why a curse that threatens to kill my descendants in 300 years is scary. I get, who knows, maybe, maybe Mexicans are more sure about their status. Now, here's an example of a movie. It's called The Man and the Monster, and it was pretty much ruined by American re-editing and dubbing, so you gotta get the original version. What we have here is a person who sold his soul to the devil to become the greatest piano player in the world. But the devil also gave him a musical number, which presumably the devil wrote, that when he plays it, he turns into a repulsive monster when he plays it. Now. You can see the monster in the picture. Now, in the American version, when they read up and edit it, they play it kind of like a werewolf movie, where when the guy plays the piece, he turns into the monster against his will. But, like, 
And people rightly point out, like, why would he do that then? It makes no sense. Don't play that piece. He won't be a monster. But in the Mexican version, before the Americans re-edited it, this guy is actively evil. After all, he sold his soul to the devil, but he was egged onto it by his domineering mother. And the fact that a domineering mother is a key part of this movie is very Mexican. So anyway, in the Mexican version, he plays the piece because he wants to become the monster to kill those who stand in his way. It works out a lot better. I like this movie a lot. Um, and he's not just a bad guy. I mean, he is a bad guy, but he has he has problems, you know. So anyway, now the Black Pit of Doctor M is a really good atmospheric movie, which does not feature a monster exactly. It has a guy who wants to see what's beyond death, and everyone says if you do this, you'll be cursed horribly. And he finds out, and he's cursed horribly. The workings of fate are kind of the antagonist, almost like in. Um, uh, final Destination, but there's an insane asylum, an acid-burned man-man, a ghost which the main guy can't see but everyone else can, and other bits and pieces. Uh, it's almost impossible to describe the plot because it goes, but it does have a plot. It just twists around a million ways. So Black Pit of Dr. M, worth looking at. Night of the Bloody Apes is a really gory movie from the 60s. I was surprised because I'm not used to seeing blood and guts on the screen from a movie that looks old. Now, in this picture, the monster doesn't look too great, and he doesn't look too great in the movie either, but his actions are amazing. Now, by the way, if you want to know how to make a gorilla monster, the trick is a heart transplant. You take a gorilla's heart, and you put it in a human body, and he turns into a gorilla monster periodically. So now you know. Anyway, Night of the Bloody Apes isn't as good as the previous films I mentioned. Also, they kind of, prom in the title with the plural apes, they kind of promise more than one bloody ape, but there's not, there's only one. In, but here's the other thing. The Mexican movies, even the bad ones, they're fun and they clip right along. They're nice and short. Bloody Apes is only 80 minutes long. You know, there's lots more to delve into here. There's Mexican Dracula movies from the 60s. There's The Witch's Mirror, which I love about a cursed mirror. There's The World of the Vampires, which has an underground cabin full of vampires and werewolves and an organ made out of bones that figures prominently in the plot. Probably better known to most people are the kind of the goofy Mexican things like their Aztec mummy movies with the wrestling women. Uh, the wrestling thing is this huge deal. Or the famous Santo movies. Plus there's also a wrestler, former wrestler, the Blue Demon, who's in films of his own, but also partnered with Santo. Um, there's a lot of the Santo movies. But but most of them aren't yet in English, sadly. You can get all the wrestling women in the mummy movies, though. They're kind of odd because you think in a culture that really likes wrestling and makes a lot of movies about wrestling that they would have evolved a special cinematography to show wrestling, but they don't. They pretty much, there's the wrestling arena and they fix the camera and they just watch it happen. They're not zooming in or out or doing anything interesting. Maybe it's because they're trying to reproduce what it's like when you see it as a sport. I don't know, because the because Mexican cinematographers are able to do clever things. They just don't ever when they're probably Mexican. So if there's any Mexican cinematographers hearing this who want to do a wrestling movie, listen to me. Don't just film it flat on. Anyway, I'm not going to talk much more about the wrestling movies because they're not actually scary. They're just fun. If you want to look up that kind of movie, you know where to find it. But today, Mexico is still making good horror movies. Um, we Are What We Are is a movie about cannibalism, and it's really effective, I thought. Um, and you and it brings up all kinds of other things to concern your with yourself with. There's another cinema movie called The Day of the Dead, which there might be a ghost or there might not be a ghost, but there is a murder and there's multiple murders and what's causing the murders and there's racism involved in it, which is always a fun thing in a movie. Um, and I mean that quite seriously. I mean, I'm not, I'm not poor racist, but, uh, but racism as one of the antagonistic elements in a film can be really strong. There's a movie called The Similars, which has a really great first 30, 45 minutes. And um, and then it drops off to the point that one of my friends was yelling and screaming and cursing at the movie. But hey, those first 40 minutes will always have that, right? And the Mexicans did the best vampire movie in 50 years, Kronos. Guillermo del Toro, who is, of course, from Mexico, is doing some really good stuff. It's worth an occasional peek at Mexican horror. I felt rewarded by following it. Yeah, they have cheap special effects. Sometimes they have weird Mexican bits, but that's part of the fun for me. And the special effects aren't always bad. There's one movie I was watching where I didn't realize a particular building was a model until the very last scene when it fell apart. And even then I could only tell because I'd seen so many movies with crumbling special effects, mostly from Japan. And I said, that was a great model. So I'm gonna list the titles of all the movies we talked about. 
so you can check them out on your own if you're interested. Plus, I've added a few more that I liked. So go ahead and look at these for a while and you may see something you like or want to watch too.